Hi guys and welcome back to another Dot Race video and today we're going to be playing MotoGP 21. Round 18 of our World Championship brings us to Phillip Island right here in Australia. So as mentioned, right here in Melbourne in this magnificent circuit, I've got to say I really do enjoy this particular venue and I always tend to go well here, whether it be Ride 4 or previous installments of MotoGP, I'm feeling very, very confident for a good result here today. So Stefano Manzi does lead the way with the 133.064, but it's still early times, so I don't uh, suspect that he will be at the top position. I'm pretty confident in thinking that we're going to be up there battling out with the best of them. And of course, momentum is truly on our side right now. We are just brimming with confidence after numerous podium positions and earning some valuable championship points as Remy Gardner and the rest of them have struggled somewhat. But going into Siberia for the very first time of this entire weekend right here in Phillip Island. I've got to say it does feel absolutely awesome being on this circuit, being on board this Calyx as it's now Tony Arbolino who's the fastest man on track with a 132.499 but not for long because into sector 2 we went already up by a couple of tenths of a second. Once the completion of sector 3 it'll give us a good idea on where we're going to be looking compared to Tony Arbolino's time. But breaking into the wonderful turn 10 up by three and a half tenths of a second. Yes, you absolutely seen that right. We are killing it. Across the line, we'll go in a moment. You may be looking at potentially a low 132 or potentially a 131 high. But into the left-hand side, we go for turn 12. A little bit too eager on the acceleration. They've seen the bike slip and slide somewhat. But we'll now fire it towards the Melbourne sign. And underneath that sign, across the timeline, we'll go up by one tenth of a second. A 132 302 is claimed by Matt Grant. Now, of course, on the left-hand side of your screen, you will see Raul Fernandez, Sam Lowe's, Augusto Fernandez, Ben Schneider, Bezecchi, Gardner, Tony Arbolino, everyone there with red sectors in the first sector. But that second sector seems to have caught everybody out except Raul Fernandez, who just set a personal best going into the second split. So now onto the left-hand side, we go for the Stoner Corner. We need to get turn four right, and then we can start bringing in. But we're a little bit out of shape there as we go. Oh, absolutely monumental crash for the Moto2 World Championship leader. And I think that has ended his practice time prematurely. But going into the end of free practice, and yes, even just after setting one lap of the entire weekend, Grant sits at the top with a 132-302. Remy Gardner just one-tenth behind. A Bezeki, two-tenths behind. So let's have a look at the qualifying times, or the pre-qualifying times. Fabio Di Giantonio, Celestino Vietti, Aaron Connett and Marcel Schrotter join the rest of the 14 riders to battle it out for qualifying top dominant position, i.e. pole position in Q2. So back on the bike we go, we have dusted ourselves off and checked ourselves for any minor or major injuries because that was very, very scary. You carry a lot of speed coming out of the stoner corner and braking very, very heavily with the anchors on going into turn four. I just got a little bit too eager, I won't lie. I was feeling like I was on ride four there, braking quite abruptly compared to the likes of MotoGP and the bike started to skip and then of course you seen the aftermath. But already just after one sector, up by three tenths of a second. And we do have Sam Lowe's just ahead of us. We're going to start breaking here well before the Motul sign on the left-hand side there. And we're now going into turn four. Nice and tight apex there. Beautifully done. Bring on the power following the Elfmark VDS rider of Sam Lowe's. And we will begin to try and use a bit of slipstream here. Maybe we'll get caught up a little bit going into the next couple of right-handers. But we're up by a whopping two seconds as things stand right now. But, oh, we just touch. Just barely touched the grass and that has invalidated this particular lap time but of course we'll still continue as we get very close there to Sam Lowe's on an invalidated lap that was a little bit too aggressive just looking behind me there trying to apologize but I don't think Sam would be too interested in the apologies right now that was a very very aggressive move which certainly was a bit uncalled for but we're just showing our true potential on the soft option front and rear tires so this lap time is going to be obviously invalidated and it's going to mean nothing but it's still it's going to be a good indication of what we can actually do. It could be interesting to see what lap time we can produce. So we'll be going across the line in a moment, and it's, oh my lord, it's a 
1.838, up by three and a half seconds compared to Sam Lowe's time of 135.605. So we've just done the lap time that could potentially give us pole position, but now we have to do it this time without invalidating it. So going into the southern loop, for the second time of asking for the third time of today's video. Onto the left hand side we go, we'll spring on the power a little bit prematurely there, but Lord Almighty already up by five tenths a sec of a second. Sam Lowe's is still red in the first sector and the same can be said for the Italian from Rimini, Marco Bezzecchi. But going into turn four on the right hand side of the tyre we go. Be careful not to go a little bit too eager on the acceleration. I was somewhat eager, but not as much as I was with uh, the Southern Loop or the lap prior. But for now we can still continue to push forward, just do what we do best, and that is begin to churn out the lap times, and oh my goodness, up by 2.1 seconds, I guess that doesn't really say the whole picture, since that Sam Lowe's has not really had a chance to chuck in some searing pace lap times, but right now, going into Lukey Heights, one of the best combinations of corners ever, in my opinion, Lukey Heights, to then drop the anchors on into turn 10, we're up by 2.7 seconds, this is going to be one ridiculous lap time, let me tell you that. On to the left-hand side we go for turn 11. Sam Lowe's will be setting the lap time after us, so it'll be literally us at the top of the time sheets, and then we'll see exactly what lap times people are setting on the left-hand side. But Bezeki sets us off with a 132-302. Grant's got to do the business as well. Across the line we will go in a moment's time, and it's a 131-702. A truly outrageous lap time already coming in from the likes of Grant, Gardner and Bezeki. Even Ben Schneider and Schrotter are up there as well. But let's see if we can do the business once more. We're going to get maybe one or two more laps in us. And let's see if we can beat our own time for 131.702. But I've got to say, I think that'll be it. I don't think Remy Gardner and the likes of Ben Schneider are going to be able to compete with that particular lap time. But already into Sector 1, we are up by 33 thousandth of a second onto the left hand side we go for stone a corner try and not touch the rumble strip like i just did there it just kind of slows you down a little bit as we get a bit out of shape going into honda for turn four and onto the right hand side we'll begin to bring on the power be sure to be careful bringing it on as we now go into siberia onto the left hand side just trail breaking it in for six for siberia coming out of the second gear and then third gear and then full acceleration we have <laughs> we have matched the time from the previous lap time a complete 0, 0.000 difference compared to the previous lap time. But this is going to be another improvement for the uh, Patronus Calex. I'm very, very much enjoying this sort of track and this performance we're putting on right now. This could be a truly, truly dominant race if we're not careful. This could be Mazzano all over again. And it's very rare we actually get to do that in these particular games and this particular career mode, but I'm very keen to see what we can do. Remy Garden will be having a look over his right hand shoulder there to see the searing pace, the ultimate professional Grant going 120% right now, just like the AI difficulty. But across the line we will go. It's going to be another improvement. Oh my goodness, a 131. 369 more than half a second clear from Remy Gardner right now the two Red Bull KTM IO riders in second place and third they certainly won't be mad about that one but ultimately you would think that uh, Remy Gardner is going to be very very miffed to see his championship antagonist let's say in his eyes is going to be right there sitting pretty at the top in his home GP and i got to say, these soft option tyres have worked really, really well, so we've done it again. We're going to push as much as we can, possibly now going into turn four for Honda. Run it a little bit deep, but at the same time, not so bad. I used to like to run it a little bit tighter there to get a more optimal line, but we're already up by two and a half tenths of a second. This is going to be another ridiculous lap time coming in from the man who is leading the World Championship. If this was MXGP, there would be a red plate firmly attached to that Petronas Calix SRT machine right now. But onto the right hand side we go for turn 8, coming up to my most favourite section of this particular circuit, turn 9 and turn 10, Lukey Heights to drop it into the turn 10, I love it, break just after the Oakley sign on your left there, get a little bit out of shape going into turn 10, but we're still up by a nice chunky amount of time, and of course I don't see any particular, in oh there it is, there's invalidated lap. So this lap won't actually matter, but I'm pretty certain we've already done the business, so it's now all elementary. Just to get across the line, complete the lap, and just say, look, I think we're taking pole position. <laughs> so guys, of course, don't forget, tonight the Grand Prix will be 8pm, and we will be starting from pole position. So guys, as you can see, 
Pole position goes to the way of the British rider once again. Remy Gardner, Al Fernandez sitting second and third. You better believe them two are going to be teaming up against us to try and dethrone us from the first position and also to try and halt some momentum that we have well and truly got underneath our belt. So guys, as always, thank you very much for watching the video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Like, comment and subscribe if you did. And I'll see you tonight at 8pm for the Grand Prix. Hit the notification bell to be alerted to every single Dot Trace upload and I will see you later on. Ciao for now. Oh hi, didn't quite see you there. Good to see you're still here. If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Dot Trace content by clicking the video shown on screen now. Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description. Consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Dot Trace video.